Hey. I'll give it up. Hallelujah. The nugget prophet. Oh, is that Hallelujah. one for me? Is that one for me? Then yeah. why don't you do a better one for Jesus? Yeah. Why don't you do a better one for the Lord of your salvation? Jesus. Oh, I cannot feel somebody at all. I cannot feel somebody yeah. at all. Are you in the building at all? Yeah. Lift yeah. up your voice. Shout unto God. I said shout, 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 shout to Jehovah with a voice of triumph that cry will send. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to the King of glory. Is somebody excited to be in church? Yeah. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. Right. And this is the house of God. Yeah. And so we are excited to be in the presence of our king. Oh, somebody, can you give it up for the man of God? Yeah. The very prophetic hope. Oh, somebody, are you, are you celebrating your father? Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody clap for the man of God. Yeah. Papa, we honor you so much. We have missed you a lot. And so we are happy that you have attended the service. Hey. We are happy that, you know, America could not withhold you. Hey. We had to release you to Ghana. Hey. And this morning we are so excited, Papa. Hey. Because you are a luminary. You are, you are an eminence in this hey. generation. A man that carries spiritual power. Hey. He's so spiritually fortified. You cannot try this man of God. I'm hey. telling you. I am telling you, That's right. because he's a blessed man of God. That's you know, right. The hand of the Lord is upon this man. That's right. Even when he was in his mother's room, he started prophesying. Hey. He started prophesying from Come his mother's room. Somebody, as you are celebrating him, eh, hey. I see that hey. same grace Jesus. coming upon you and your kids. Hey. That same grace is coming upon you. Hey. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Papa, we honor you so much. We thank you for raising us. You know, Papa, he's a great leader. There are many leaders in this life, but few of them are great. A great leader is one that can locate you in your raw state. And then he will polish you and nurture you. And then you will become attractive to many people. Hey. You know, when you were raw, they couldn't identify you. That's but right. it takes a great leader to identify some of us. I am very raw. Very raw. He's, 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 he's processing me for the nations. That's right. Hallelujah. Oh, put Come your hands together for the man of God. We love him so much. That's right. Papa, we love you. We love you so much. That's right. Now lift up your hands towards heaven. And begin to thank God for the gift of life. Somebody lift up your hands towards heaven. Your kidneys are working. Maybe you might not have money in your pocket, but then your kidneys are working this morning. Your heart is working this morning. Somebody is bedridden at Kolebu. But you and I, by the mercies and by the grace of God, we are standing before Elohim. We are standing before the God of our salvation. And it is by the doing of the Lord. So lift up your hands and thank him this morning. Lift up your hands and bless the name of the living God this morning. He's worthy of our praises. He's worthy of our praises. Father, we lift up our hands towards you. And we declare that may your name be exalted, may your name be magnified. May your name be glorified this morning. We thank you, Lord, Father, you did not look on our sins. You had mercy on us, Father, you had mercy. When we were in the world, Lord, you did not, you did not forsake us. But when we were deep down in sin, Lord, by your mercies and by your grace, you have picked up from the merry clay. You have polished us, Father, you have cleansed us by your blood. And you have anointed us to be, to be a blessing to your people. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. If this is Somebody your open your mouth and thank God. Thank God. Don't don't ask of him anything. If this is your Just presence, give him thanks. Thank you, Jesus. If this is your power, Lord, this is your power. Come on, sell it, sell it. If this is your power, we give you thanks this morning for the opportunity. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of life. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you. Somebody put your hands together. And you may be seated in the presence of the living God. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Auntie Abin, I want to thank you so much for the kind words. You know, I was honored when you said you respected me so much. I was really touched and I thank you for your kind words. I salute everybody in the house. Put your hands together for yourself because you have made it to church. Hallelujah. So like I said, Papa, I honor you so much. I really thank you so much because, you know, this, it, it was in this church that I preached for the very first time. And it was by your doing and by your leadership. And so I thank you so much. To stand uh, on the pulpit uh, of a great man and to preach on a Sunday service is, is not really easy at all. It has to take a, a great leader and a good leader, one that believes in you to give you that opportunity. Because as I'm standing here and as I'm preaching or as I'm, as I'm releasing the word of God, I am going all over the nations. It's not just to about 300 people, but then because of technology... I am preaching to the nations of the world. And it is by the doing of this great man of God. Somebody stand up one more time and honor God's gift to this nation. Can we have Proverbs 18 whilst we remain standing as a custom of this house is? Can we have Proverbs 18 verses 20 on the screen? Proverbs 18, Proverbs 18, 20. The Bible says that a man's stomach put your hands on your stomach the bible says that a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the food of his mouth it says from the produce of his lips he shall be filled please verse 21 the next verse if you can give me kjv i'll be very happy i'm a kjv preacher it says verse 21 says death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof amen go back to verse 20 let's read one more time it says a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled hallelujah verse 21 it says death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof let's pray father we thank you for the opportunity to come before you it is not because of what we have done but it is by divine providence we thank you for your graciousness and for your goodness now spirit of a living God I ask that come upon this vessel come upon this man servant because if you do not move my words will not carry power I cannot bless your people of my own because Bible said that every power the excellency of every power is of God and not of man Therefore, do that which you alone can do in the midst of your people. I thank you because you are prayer answering God. Please put your hands together and be seated. Now, I am here to preach a very simple sermon that I have titled, The Mystery of Words. Somebody say, The Mystery of Words. You know, we are in the month of the supernatural and because we are in the month of the supernatural, we need to understand certain spiritual keys, hallelujah, so that we can walk victoriously in this month of the supernatural, amen. Now hear me, man is trapartite. Now when I say man is trapartite, what I mean is that man consists of three components. You are a spirit, you have a, you have a soul, and you live in a body, hallelujah. So you that you are seated here, what I am seeing is your body. But then the real you is your spirit. And then you have a soul. So man is a spirit. That is the real you. Your body is just a container that houses the real you. Now ladies and gentlemen, I can see many of you nodding in agreement to what I am saying. In other words, you have knowledge of this fact. But then I can tell whether you believe this fact or not by the way you handle spiritual things. Now, even though you are a spirit, I can tell your attitude towards the things of God, whether you believe that you really are a spirit. And so some of you do not have any problem at all to spend about a thousand Ghana cities on your hair. And yet when you come to church and the man of God asks for the same amount, you begin to grumble and you begin to murmur. It is an indication that even though you know you are a spirit, you don't believe that assertion. Amen? Some of you do not worry at all. You carry your kids and then you go to a very expensive restaurant and then you spend so much money. And even when your kids are full, you tell them, because you want to spend more money on them because you love them so much. And yet when you come to the house of God 
It becomes a struggle between you and the man of God to release a sacrifice in the house of God. That tells me, ladies and gentlemen, that even though you believe and you know that you are a spirit, you are paying so much attention to the things of the flesh. And that is an error. Hallelujah. That is an error. Some of you spend so much money on your makeup, your dress, your clothes. You pay so much attention to the things of the flesh. And yet, Bible says that you are a spirit. Hallelujah. Now, because you are a spirit, and because man is a spirit, if you want to dominate or have preeminence in this life, in the physical realm, it is very important that you take preeminence. It is very important that you build your spiritual man. Hallelujah. Because life is just not physical at all. Life is very what? Spiritual. That is why the Bible says that and Jesus grew and waxed strong in what? In spirit. Because Jesus understood that this life that he is living, it is not physical at all. And that if he is to dominate and if he is to rule in this life, he needs to take preeminence in what? In spiritual things. That is why Jesus built up his spirit man so much. And so don't spend time so much on the things of the flesh. In this month of the supernatural, as you are paying attention to the things of the flesh, ladies and gentlemen, it is also important and even more important that, that you take attention or you give attention to the things of the spirit. Put your hands together for the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible said that the children of the world are wiser than the children of what? Of light. Why did the Bible say that? Now, when, when, when a child or a person is of the world and they are not doing so well in this life and they want to make it spiritually, their first point of call is to contact occult, malams, babalawos, all kinds of deities because... Because that person is a child of the world, that person understands that if he is to dominate in this life, he first of all needs spiritual backing. And they do not care at all the kind of sacrifices they have, they have to make in order to attain spiritual power. Some of them do not mind at all whether they have to sacrifice their mothers, their fathers, their kids. They do not really care at all because they know that if they can pay their price, then they can have spiritual power. What price are you paying to have spiritual power? What price are you paying? Because I'm telling you, life is not just about material things. Because you can have a good car. You can live in a mansion. You can have all the money there is in this world. But I am telling you, if you are not spiritually fortified, an enemy can come in and cut your life short. And where would that money be? Where would that money, where will it go? So as you are busy going about things of the flesh to acquire money and wealth in this life, I am here to admonish you. Also pay attention to the things of the spirit. Be spiritual in these last days. Put your hands together. Be spiritual. Be spiritual. In these last days, don't take any chances at all. Because hear me, when a witch or a wizard in your family carries spiritual power, that person is able to create long life for himself. I am telling you. Because we've been in a service where Papa has picked up people and prophesied that there is an old man or an old witch or an old wizard in your family. And it is time for that person to leave the scene. And because that person carries spiritual power, that person wants to exchange their expired life with the life of a very young person. So that that person can live long. That is a spiritual person. Because he carries spiritual power, he is able to create long life for himself. That is why I said life is not just about material things. It is also about the immaterial things. Because you can buy a king-sized bed, but, if, but then if you are not spiritually fortified, you can't have good sleep. I am telling you. That is the kind of life that you are living. And so many of you, maybe you have not come into prominence, but, but you are so spiritually strong that if you know you don't have money, the witches in your family, they are afraid of you. I am telling you, like myself, I don't have much money, but it's the witches in my family. Because of the training I have gone through and I am going through from my father, you dare not come nigh me. I am telling you, because I will blow you away with some intercontinental ballistic missiles. I will blow you up the place. Are you hearing me, somebody? Put your hands together and give God some praise in the building. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Jesus. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. I am grateful to God. Hallelujah. You are, you are saying I'm a dictionary prophet, but when I was in school, I couldn't speak good English. I'm telling you. But here I am, by the mercies and by the grace of God, I can stand before people to deliver the word of God. Somebody give thanks to the King of Kings. He is good and his mercies endure it forever. Hallelujah. Now, because life is spiritual, you and I need to understand certain spiritual keys. Hallelujah. Because if we are to reign in life, we need to take hold of spiritual keys. That is why today I have come to release a word that says the mystery of what? Of words. Because words are keys in the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah. And anybody that has understanding of this key reigns in life. Amen. Now, what are words? What are words in the realms of the spirit? Now, it is words that we use to create our desires. The things that you desire in this life. As a spiritual person, you need to understand that it is your words that you are, you are supposed to use to create those things. Hallelujah. Because in the realms of the spirit, words carry more value than money. Words, they are higher in value in the realms of the spirit than money. So if you have desires, for instance, you are a young man, you want to be an international preacher. Yet you do not know your way to the passport office. You need to use your words to create that atmosphere for yourself. Are you hearing me, somebody? Maybe you are an employee. And you want to become an owner of a business. It is your words that you use to what? To create those things. Put a scripture on the, sc on the screen. That is why the Bible says that a man's belly shall be what? Shall be satisfied by the fruits of his mouth. Meaning that sometimes you may not have money. But you have your words. I remember when I was a young kid. Anytime I would walk in the open. And I will see an aircraft in the atmosphere. I will lift up my, my hands and I will point to that aircraft. And then I will say to myself, Robert, it will, be an, it will be an error for me to come into this life and not sit in this aircraft. I used to say that to myself. And as I'm standing before you, even though I have not come into much wealth, I have traveled the nations of the world. I said, I have traveled the nations of the world. And some of you are laughing. He said, Robert, how many countries have you been to? And you are saying you are traveling the nations of the world. But you forgot that the scripture said that. It said as his lips are increasing, he shall be filled. That is why when we were in school, we saw young men. They used to try the enum. And little did you know that as they were trying the enum, they were creating their lives for themselves. And they were saying big, big things. Uh, they were creating their future for themselves. And so I have been hearing Pastor Nis say that he will buy a G-Wagon one day. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that one day that thing is going to come to pass. I, I met a, a man of God that said to me that when he was a kid, he loved Ben so much. And he used to say that in the atmosphere that one day I will own a Benz. Uh, and I I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that that man of God is riding in his own pants right now. And so many of you, you are where you are in life right now because of the words that you used to speak into the atmosphere. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise. Now hear me. I have never seen a policeman arresting somebody because that person said big things for himself. I have never seen some before. And so I have never seen a policeman coming after Pastor Nee. Even though he, he drives a Hilux and he says he wants a, a gin wagon. I have never seen a policeman coming after him. And so when you say big things for yourself, when you begin to try your enum, I am telling you police cannot arrest you. So why do you limit your words? Say big things for yourself. If somebody is not spiritual because if they were, they will begin to open their mouth and say things for themselves. I am traveling the nations of the world. I am the head and not the tail. In fact, I am a multi-billionaire in pounds. In fact, I am fruitful on all sides. Because I am using my words to create that kind of life that I need for myself. And so if somebody will begin to lift up their voice and tell the Ayanum seven things, you will not be arrested. And so Pastor Joseph has been saying uh, he wants to have his wedding in Dubai. Uh, even though uh, I don't know whether he has traveled before, but he's using his words uh, to create those words, uh, to create his life. Uh, somebody use your words, use your words, uh, use your words. Uh, anytime uh, I see a big car, like
that the one Auntie Abra is driving, I stand by that car, I point to that car, and I say, One day, Robert, even though you are sitting in Trotro every day, there is coming a time in your life uh, that you ride that big car. Somebody lift up your voice, uh, create your future, create, create, create your desirables in life. Hallelujah. You don't need money, you need your words. Create that G wagon. You are a young woman, you are a young man, you are, you are single. You have seen a particular kind and type of woman. The Bible said that some are fearfully made and some are wonderfully made. And for you, thanks be to God, you have seen a very wonderfully made vessel. Instead of you to use your words to create, you are running away in fear and in panic. But use your word to attract that lady. Use your word. And so as I am standing on this water, I want to use my word to attract a certain kind of woman. I said I want to use my words to attract that kind of lady. Because I am single. And I need to become double. I need to become double. Are you hearing me, somebody? By the way, after you use your words, make some move, make some move, make some move, make some move. Amen. Put your hands together for the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, it is also our words that we use to pull down negative things in our lives. And so the negative realities that we are, we are, we are experiencing or we have in our lives. It is our words, not our monies. Our words, not our beauty. It is our words, not our name, that we use to pull down those things. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verses 1, that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord brooded upon the face of the waters. And the Bible said that when God came on the scene and saw the darkness, God spoke the word. And said, let there be light. Hallelujah. Some of you in your families, you see poverty all around you. You see promise and fail. Divorce. Barrenness. Your names have never risen into prominence. And instead of you to complain, it is your worst. It is your worst. Because complaining and worrying and murmuring and, and grumbling will never change anything in your life. I'm telling you. As you are worrying about the situation, what will your worry do to that situation? So instead of spending time worrying, why don't you use your words? Somebody use your words. Why don't you use your words to pull down the negative realities in your life? And so I see the hand of the Lord that came upon a certain prophet by name Ezekiel. And the Bible said that the hand of the Lord took that prophet into a valley full of dry bones. And that the bones were so dry. And God asked the prophet, that young prophet, can these bones live? And the man of God was looking at God. And God said that the solution to these dry bones, it is not with me, but it is in your mouth. The man God said to the prophet, that if only you will open your mouth and command these dry bones to become life. God said to the man of God, the bones will not have any option than to comply to your words. And so if I were you, if I see barrenness in my family, I will use my words to reverse that barrenness. If your family members don't grow longer or they don't grow too far, I will use my words uh, to alter that situation. Uh, some of you, your names have never written into prominence. Uh, instead of you to complain, why don't you use your word to change that situation? Use your words. Use your words. Use your words. Now hear me. Like I said, it is your word that you use to what? Pull down negative realities. And so don't go about in life worrying. Personally, I don't worry in life. I don't have it all, but I have faith and I believe God and I know spiritual principles because when I was young, I, I used to tell myself that I would preach the gospel and I didn't even know how I would preach. The, I didn't know how because my father was not a preacher. As a matter of fact, I'm coming from an SDA background and my father, even though he believes in the things of God, he doesn't want any of his kids to become a preacher because he wants you to go to school because we are academically good so that you can become a doctor, a pal or something like that. But for a preacher man, coffee, 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 coffee. How am I going to benefit from all the investment I've made from you? You said you want to be a preacher, man. And so I'm telling you the truth. Up to now, my father doesn't know I preach. He doesn't know. By the time he realized, by the orchestration of God, and by the orchestration of his man servant, I will be preaching to the nations of the world. I will heal the sick. I will raise the dead. I'm telling you. Because it is the doing of the Lord. It is the doing of the Lord. Somebody put your hands together and give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. And so, 
You know, when it comes to using your words, when it comes to using your words, there are certain keys. There are certain keys that we need to key into. Amen? The number one key here is to be consistent. Be consistent with your positive words. Don't let any negative word word proceed out of your mouth. It is consistency. One key is consistency. Now, some of you are here because you use your words in the past to say that when I grow up, maybe I'll become a baker or a seamstress or things like that. And you were consistent with those words. You said to yourself that at a certain stage or at a certain age, you would marry. And it was because you were consistent with your words. They came to pass. Amen. And so don't let anybody talk you out of your good words. Now the Bible says in the book of John 1.1 1, 1, that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was what? God. Then the Bible said that the same was in the beginning with the father and all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was what? Made. The Bible says that in him is life and that life is the light of the world. Then the Bible said that that light shines in darkness and the darkness could not comprehend that light. Then when you jump to verse 14, the Bible says that, and the word became flesh. Do you know what it means? It means that that word that was spoken by Isaiah, that word that was spoken by Jeremiah, that word that was spoken by Elisha, that word that was spoken by Moses, that word that was spoken by Abraham for a period of 2,000 years. One day the word said to the father, I have been released into the realms of the spirit so much. I don't have any option than to manifest in the flesh. He said, I do not have any option. It is because, you know, Jesus didn't have an option. It was because the word had been preached so long. It had been declared so long into the atmosphere. He had no option than to manifest in the flesh. And the Bible said that when he manifested in the flesh, he was beheld by many as the only son begotten of the father. Then the Bible said that he was full of truth and of grace. Now hear me. When the words were being proclaimed and preached by the prophets of old, the Bible said that they mocked at them. They mocked at the prophets. They mocked at them. They ridiculed them. They laughed at them. But little did they know that one day, these words that they were laughing at is about to be manifested in the flesh. It is about to be what? Manifested in the flesh. Now the same applies to you. You may be saying good things for yourself. You may be saying you are a billionaire. But people around you, because you don't even have 10 Ghana CDs in your account, and yet you are saying a billionaire, they are pointing fingers at you and they are mocking at you. You may be single right now, but you have been saying that I will marry a billionaire. I will marry a millionaire. Maybe you haven't traveled before, but you keep on saying that you will travel the nations of the world. Maybe you are out of job, but you keep on saying, I will not just be an employee, but I'll be an owner of my own business. And people around you are mocking at you. People around you are laughing at you, but don't bother at them at all. Little did they know that the words that you are speaking is about to be manifested it's about to be manifested it is about to be manifested and the bible said uh, when they beheld the glory it was full of grace uh, it was full of truth uh, and i am here to profess to somebody when the words that you are speaking uh, when they manifest in the physical they will be full of power they will be full of glory and the bible said uh, he set a table before me in the presence uh, of the very before in the presence uh, of my enemies uh, and so those people that used to mock at you those people are, that are ridiculing you those people that are laughing at you when your words manifest it will be before them when your jew are gonna pierce it will be before them when you get your visa and you are traveling the nations it will be before them that is why god should not kill all your enemies some of them must remain some of them must remain so that they will see your words that are manifested in this life if you believe the word of the lord why don't you put your hands together and give god a shout of praise hallelujah I'm saying that your words will manifest. Tell somebody, my words will manifest. My words, not your money. So you may not have an accommodation, but keep saying that you live in Trasaco. Maybe you are living in a dilapidated building somewhere at Mamprobi or Choco, someplace, Logotuesi, somewhere. 
but keep saying that you will live in Trasaco one day. I said, keep saying that you will build that mansion one day. Baby, you are living in a single room, not just with your father and mother, but with your sisters, your brothers, and three housemates. Uh, but say to yourself, uh, one day, the room that I'll be sleeping in, it will be bigger than this auditorium. Baby, you are sleeping on a student bed, but say to yourself, not just will I sleep uh, on a king-size bed, uh, but I'm lying on a water bed, a massaging bed, uh, full of air conditioner. Maybe your room is so hot uh, that any time you get to the room, uh, you want to run back to church uh, because of the atmosphere. But don't worry at all. As you begin to say good things for yourself, uh, I am telling you that they will manifest. They will manifest. They will come to pass. Uh, they will come to pass. Uh, your enemies shall behold your good words. Somebody put your hands together. Hallelujah to the King of Glory. Now, the number two key here is that you need to speak in faith. The element of faith is very, very important. So Jesus said that if you have faith like the seed of what? Of a mustard. You can say to this mountain, be thou what? Removed and cast yonder. And Jesus said, because of your faith, those words, that mountain has no option than to comply. Power of Worship International. Power of Worship International. Why do we not say testimony tent? Why don't we say testimony tent? Because we are worshiping in a tent right now. But because we are releasing those words in faith. This whole place is about to become a city. It is about to become a city. Because our man of God, as spiritual as he is, he understands that as we keep on shouting, testimony city, testimony city, testimony city, testimony city, testimony city, city. one day, you will not come to meet this tent, but you come to meet apartment. Look at this edifice. It is an edifice of faith. I'm telling you, it's an edifice of faith. And so one of these days, you come here and you don't see this tent anymore. You will see this edifice of faith. When we came here, we were just on this land. But because of the words of faith that was released, Burkina Faso is about to become part of Ghana. Put your hands together for that. Burkina Faso, all of a sudden, has been invaded by colonial masters. And we are taking over. We are pulling down their, their, their structures. And we are taking over. Enough of the clay building. This is the 21st century. No more clay building. Ultra modern 21st century testimony cathedral. I am telling you, that is what is about to happen because we are releasing the words in what? In faith. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That is why it is important that you need to come to church at all times. Because anytime you come to church, the word of God is being preached. And it vitalizes, it energizes, it, it vigorates, it empowers. Your spirit man, you become so full of the word that anywhere you go and challenges begin to appear because you are so full of the word. You attack them with your words. You attack the challenges with your words. That is why anytime when you wake up in the morning, you need to lift up your right hand and legislate. You see, the Bible says that we have been made kings and priests unto our gods. And unto our God. And I have never seen a king or a priest negotiating. That is why Job said, thou shalt what? Decree a thing. Because Job understood that kings, they deal with what? Decrees. And so I decree this morning in the name of Jesus that your glory is about to be manifested. I said, I decree upon the altar of our father that this morning, eh, your enemies are about to be bowed. They will bow down before you. I decree in the name of Jesus that you that is called barren a year by this time, you will be with twins, you will be with triplets. I am here to decree the word of the Lord into your life. That you that many say that you do not have any job. I have come to tell you that a year by this time, you will not be an employee. But you will own your own job. You own your own job. Maybe your business is going down. But by this decree that I am making, because I stand in the office as a king. And upon this altar, I declare in the name of Jesus. That let your glory manifest. Let your enemies bow before you. You may be in the valley right now. But I am here to tell you. That you will not remain in the valley long. Your time of exposure 
your time of elevation, your time of upliftment has come and it is now. I didn't say it is tomorrow, I said it is now, it is now, it is now, it is now. Your time of favor, I hear the Bible say, for thou shalt favor Zion because her set time has come. And I am here to declare to you that it is your set time. Enough of the delay, enough of the delay. Your set time has come. In fact, there are five people in this place. That your promotion and elevation is due. Say at the spirit of a living God. Your promotion and your elevation has come this morning. I said it has come this morning. No more delays. Hallelujah. You are the head and not the tail. You are moving from the valley. Because you are a child of God. You are moving from the valley. And God is placing you on the mountaintop. As a matter of fact, if my friends that know me. And know the way I am. If they were to be here. And to see what God is doing with me, with me right now. They will be amazed. But little did they know. That we serve a faithful God. We serve a true and a living God. You see God there. Eh, he will disappoint your enemies. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. God is an expert in disappointing your enemies. Eh? Sometimes God will just be watching them. And then they will carry on whatever they are doing. But little did they know. That in the background. Somewhere called in the shadows. Your maker is working. Your maker is working behind the scenes. And God loves to take your enemies by surprise. Sometimes they think that they have the upper hand. And then all of a sudden, there will be a big bang. Somebody say a big bang. There will be a big bang in their faces. And then they will fall flat to the ground. And that is where they will know that this man, this woman, serves a true and a living God. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Now I want to deal with the last principle. That is the principle of speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now the Bible says in Genesis 1, 1. That in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. But when God saw the darkness. God said I have to wait. For the brooding of the Holy Ghost. And God waited for the Holy Ghost to brood upon the face of the waters. And God said, because the Holy Spirit is now upon the face of this situation, when I speak, creation will take place. And so immediately the Holy Ghost came and God spoke the word. The Holy Ghost grabbed hold. He grabbed hold of the word of the Lord. The Holy Ghost had communion with the word. The Holy Ghost had intercourse with the word. And immediately creation take, took place. It is the same with us. That is why when Jesus came, came he, said, the, uh, he said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and then they are what? They are life. Why did Jesus say that? Jesus said that because he said in his manifesto that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the word. So Jesus knew that because the Holy Ghost was upon him, any word that he would say, the Holy Ghost will have intercourse with the word and immediately his words will become life. That is why the prophets of old, anytime before they will speak, the hand of the Lord had to come upon them. Because it is their words and the Holy Ghost combined that will give birth to that which they are saying. Put your hands together for the gospel. Now hear me. The Lord gave me this analogy. He said that when a man and a woman when they want to be delivered of a child or when they want to give birth the man alone cannot give birth. Have you seen a man alone? Don't be deceived that's by the, 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 the size of his stomach or his belly. He still is not pregnant. Amen. It is full of probably some, some kind of drink. Hallelujah. So the man alone, that's by the gangantua nature of his belly. Forgive me if, if your belly is gangantua. Forgive me. But I need to say this. The man alone, with his gangantua belly, cannot give birth. When the man alone releases seed, Without the egg of a woman, conception cannot what? take place. In the same way, no matter how beautiful you are as a lady, if you do not have a man in your life, no matter the cycles of life you go through, no matter how strong your ovulation is, if you do not have a man, whether it takes short or small, thing, if you do not have a man to release seed, for there to be what? Conception between the egg and the seed. In the same vein, you can never conceive. 
So God said to me that the words that we speak, they are, they are like seeds in the realms of the spirit. He said, and when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, when we release those words, there is an intercourse between our words and the spirit of a living God. He said, when that happens, conception begins to take place. That is why you do not take a vessel of God that is standing upon the altar to declare the word of the Lord for granted. Because I, as I am standing here, the Holy Ghost is upon me. And every word that I'm declaring, it is not just words, it is life, it is life. The words that I'm speaking, they are not just words, but they are life because the Holy Ghost is at work and so in this atmosphere where the holy ghost is so much in abundance i am here to tell you that any word that you will say shall come to pass any word that you will release from your mouth it shall become reality now the lord said to me it is because of this reason that is why as a believer you are not supposed to release negative words from your mouth because the lord said to me that you know the holy ghost because he is light and life he cannot have intercourse with with negative words but then the lord said to me there are demon spirits all over the place and the assignment is to have illegal intercourse with your negative words and so anytime you release a negative word into the atmosphere immediately you give an advantage to the enemy to demon spirit to disembodied spirit and they have intercourse with your negative words and before you know it they come to pass in your life that is why it is an error even when you have a child that is dumb in school it is an error for you to say to your child that you are dumb you amount to nothing don't say those things say positive words no that there is a story of a man of god that whose whose child is now a pilot and yet when that child was in school he was always last and the man of god said every morning he would lay his hands on his kid and say kofi what you have been too much last year you were first this year, I know you become the headmaster. He said, Kofi, even though you were first, I know this year you become the headmaster. Meanwhile, Kofi was very dumb. But the man of God understood spiritual principle. And he would not allow anybody to say any negative word unto their kid. So Yaqualaboni said, then don't say it because the child is already Aqualaboni. You saying it, what does that do to the situation? You need solution. You don't need to complicate matters. And so that's by the nature of your kid. Say positive words to them. Lay hands on your kid. Speak into their lives. Say you will be great. You will be a, a record breaker. You know, say good things unto them. And as I'm speaking to you right now, that kid of the man of God is now a pilot. Even though he used to be last in school. But he understood that with his words, with his words, he can create that desirable for his child. He understood that with his words, as he keeps on saying good things into the life of his kid, that kid will manifest that thing. And so from today, cease saying negative things. It is true that you are living in a single room. You telling everybody about it, that doesn't solve the situation. Every morning, wake up and declare to yourself. Release your seed into the atmosphere. And say, one day, one day, I will build my own house. I will not be a tenant anymore. There is coming a time in my life that I will have my own keys to my own house. Not that which somebody has built for me. You may be single today. You may be single for long. It doesn't really matter. Use your words. Tell somebody, use your words. Use your words. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the word of God. And so, I am bringing my sermon to a close. I need you to let this spiritual truth be etched. Let it be etched in your spirit, man. Because every day you come to church, you listen to sermons. But let today be a different day. When you listen to the word, put it in practice. And so after, after service, I'll be monitoring the kind of conversation people will be having. Amen. Now, the last thing. I said to God, so how, how do we create that atmosphere? God said, after you have released the word, let there be. He said, create a spiritual ovulation. He said, let spiritual ovulation occur in the building. And I asked God, I said, God, how do we do that? And God said, through our sacrifices. And as we worship him, he said, the atmosphere will be so conducive for the move of spirit. And he said that when that atmosphere becomes conducive, he said, anything, any words that my, my kids will say, there will be conception between their words and the spirit. And so we are going to induce spiritual ovulation this morning by our sacrifices. 
and by our worship. And so I want everybody to pick up a sacrifice. Pick a sacrifice. Everybody. Because we are about to put our sacrifices on the altar. And then we will worship. And then as we have worshipped, the atmosphere will be conducive for the move of spirit. And then we'll begin to say words. We'll begin to pull down negative realities in our lives. We'll begin to pull them down with our words. We'll begin to cause damage in the realms of the spirit with our words. And then after that, we'll begin to use our words because the atmosphere is right to create our future, to create our desirables. Anything that your eyes desire to see, you're going to use your words because you're sacrificed upon the altar. And because you have worshipped, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And your words are going to be they're going to be life. Conception is about to take place. And I'm telling you, anything that you say under this atmosphere, expect a manifestation. Amen? Please, let's bring our sacrifices to the altar. Please, let's bring our sacrifices from the back. From the back. Let's bring our sacrifices to the altar. Sacrifice. I said a sacrifice. I said a sacrifice. A sacrifice. Something that will cost you. Let today be a different day for you. Let today not be the same day. Let everybody bring their sacrifices to the altar. Let everybody, let everybody, don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for anybody. Bring your sacrifice to the altar. Everybody. Don't limit your giving today because it is not just an offering. It is a sacrifice. That which you have desired to see. Let it be a sacrifice. A sacrifice. Please leave the zone of the reds. Leave the zones. Leave the zones of the reds. And go to the zones of the of the browns, of the violet. Put a sacrifice in the altar. Put a sacrifice on the altar. A sacrifice. A sacrifice. A sacrifice. Everybody should bring a sacrifice. Don't leave yourself out. Look at that project that you want to build. Look at where you want to be in life and bring a sacrifice to the altar. Bring your sacrifices to the altar of God. Because the Holy Ghost is about to conceive with your words. Bring your sacrifices to the altar. Bring your sacrifices to the altar of God. Let your sacrifices flow. Everybody in the building, all over this place, let your sacrifices come to the altar. Make contact with the altar. With your sacrifice. With your sacrifice. With your sacrifice. Not just an offer, but a sacrifice. Because God requires of you a sacrifice. He requires of you a sacrifice. I tell you, it is a spiritual principle. My God. Now please be outstanding. And lift your hands towards heaven. We are about to worship the King of Kings. We are about to worship the Lord of Lords. We worship the King of Kings. We say we give you glory. We say we give you glory. Lift up both of your hands. Put up your hands. Put up your hands to the master. Worship the master. Let worship the master. The Bible said, "You are the Lord." Somebody lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Worship the King of Kings. We say we magnify your name. Somebody lift up your voice. We magnify your name. Everybody say we worship. Somebody worship, somebody worship, somebody worship, somebody worship, somebody worship, we magnify your name. name. If I was a dreaming Lord, to be free, my time for say, hey, now my one sees, he said, now, hey, 
something negative you see negative if you see positive if you say positive what you see is positive now the atmosphere is, is already created but guess what what about the negative stuff someone else have said behind the scenes against you we are about to fight it now lift up your hands 
because now if you if you know that if you say positive you see positive sometimes to the same people fighting you they know this mystery so they don't need to come and fight you physically but they will say it behind the scenes lift up your hand say in the name of jesus in the name of jesus from the day i was born from the day i was born before i was born before i was born to this particular day to this particular day whatever has been said whatever has been said against me against me that is negative that is negative right now right now in this atmosphere in this atmosphere by the blood of jesus by the blood of jesus i reverse it i reverse it i divert it i divert it i return it i return it I rebuke it. I rebuke it. And I stop it. And I stop it. Say right now. Right now. Whatever has been said. Whatever has been said. I return it. I return it. I reverse it. I reverse it. I rebuke it. I rebuke it. I stop it. I stop it. I change it. I change it. To my advantage. To my advantage. As I clap my hands. As I clap my hands. As I pray. As I pray. Somebody pray right now. Whatever has been said before you, behind you. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it in the atmosphere. Stop it in the atmosphere. Reverse it. 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 Change it. Stop it. Stop it. Reverse it. Change it. Change it. Change it. Reverse it right now. Change it. Change it. Before we are born, we change it by the blood of Jesus. We switch it by the blood of Jesus. It will never happen. It will never succeed. It will never work. It will never work. It will never work. It will never work. We change it now. We change it now. Jesus. Lift up your hand. Number two. Whatever word that has been released in a particular atmosphere. Jesus. Do you know that a word can be released in an area, an atmosphere, a territory? That whoever walks around that place, let this thing happen to them. Whoever lives around that area, let this thing happen to them. Listen, there is no place in the world that is for broke people or rich people. I'm come to explain. Nobody created a town and said this town, all the people who live there are supposed to be broke. And all the people who live in this particular town are supposed to be rich. Never. Do you know, do you know that a very rich estate developer can go to, I don't want to be using names, I want to use another country. Um, Somalia. Maybe a very, what's happening there? A very dirty place in Somalia that nobody likes because of fighting refugees and everything. A rich developer can go there and buy the place and put on high rise building there and it will be a zone for millionaires. Am I saying the truth? Am I saying the truth? In the same way, too, some refugees who are crazy can come to Ghana and come and invade Trasaco, and Trasaco will be a dirty place. Am I saying the truth? So God didn't create a bad place for some crazy people to stay there and a rich place for rich people. It's about the word over there. It means the atmosphere there, the territory there. That territory has something good in that territory. You're about to pray that every territory you enter, every atmosphere you enter, because of your presence, what is good will follow you. Amen. Say by fire, by, by fire, fire, I release. I release. 
supernatural atmosphere. Supernatural atmosphere. Around wherever I go. Around wherever I go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. By my words. By my words. I will make the atmosphere great. I will make the atmosphere great. As I clap my hands. As I pray. Somebody pray right now. Release your prayer right now. Pray right now. Worship International. Listen, this whole month of July, don't miss any service. Tuesday morning, we are here. How many people have been coming for the Tuesday morning services? It's very powerful. This Tuesday morning, I'm dealing with a subject that I've captioned supernatural provision. If God provides for you in the realms of the spirit, physically, you will have it. But if you don't have any provision in the spiritual realm, physically, you struggle to receive it. Don't miss it. What's the time? 8 to 11, we are off. And when you come, you have any prayer requests, you mention it, we pray for you. Amen. This is your last prayer. Lift up your hand. Your last prayer is very simple. The same way that a negative word was pronounced before you were born, I want to tell you, some good words were also pronounced before you were born. You are about to receive it. Why is it that any time something bad is said, it happens? But we'll be catch us in a mission while into me, mom. No, no, I might say the truth. In the course of the week, we will deal with that. Why is that so? And how to avoid it. He gave a very powerful revelation. Let's clap once for him. Very powerful revelation. You know, we all know that when you say bad things, bad things will happen. When you say good things, good things will happen. But he made a good statement, powerful revelation. He said, When you speak what is good, Holy Spirit is there too infuse it and have an intercourse with it and it will produce. In the same way too, if you say something bad, demons also have a very powerful. Clap your hands for that one. Because we all, we all know that those things happen, but he showed what, what, why. He showed the reason. Sometimes you have to know the reason and why. Lift up your hand. Because listen, there are some good things that have been said about you even before you were born. You are about to pray. This is your last prayer. That God, what you have said, let me walk in it. Amen. David said, he says, I went, uh, he says, I will live to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So the goodness of God, you are supposed to see. You are supposed to see the goodness of God. But how can you see before you say, Amen. Lift up and say every blessing, every blessing that was pronounced, that was pronounced before I was born, before I was born to this particular day, to this particular day, today, today, in that atmosphere, in this atmosphere, I enforce, I enforce, I activate, I activate now, now, I declare, I declare, I will see, I will see, I will walk in it, I will walk in it, clap your hands, see it, walk in it, clap your hands, walk in it.
I want you to uh, move away from your seat. I want you to walk about. Say whatever you want to say. Just walk in it. Because after you say something, I'm supposed to walk in it. Just say it. This one, no formula. Say it. Your life, your destiny, whatever you want to enjoy. Say it. Say it. Whatever you walk, declare right now. Listen, you can open the door. Some of you can walk on the compound. Expand your territory. Somebody just declare. We can open the door. Let's walk on the compound. Just make declaration. I just saw in my spirit that somebody is taking dominion. Your business, your finances, your children, your family, your marriage. Somebody, let's walk on the compound. Take over. Take over. This is your time to take over. 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 We take over by fire. We take over by the blood of Jesus. We take over by fire. 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 Somebody, two minutes remaining. Let's go. We take over. Two minutes remaining. We take over. We take over by fire. We take over. We take over. We take over. We take over. By fire, we take it over. We take over right now. Yes. By fire, in the name of Jesus. In the spirits that has tormented you right now. Now let's come inside. Let's come inside. Let's come inside. Let's come inside. In the name of Jesus. In the power against you. I rebuke it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak right now. Whatever they did against you right now. Go. In the name of Jesus. Break. Go. We declare. This lady, today I'm tired, I'm not prophesying, but this lady was tied under a tree. But I see that the angels have released her. Oh, those who are clapping, you too. I said, those who are clapping, you too, you have been released. You are freedom. Wherever they tied you at the age of 11 years. Today I speak. That covenant has been broken. That covenant has been broken. Aha. 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 It's the old auntie who said, I have married her. The auntie said, I have married her. Who knows her? Who brought her? Who knows her? Who brought her here? She came by herself. Why? You brought her. Where is she from? She's from Sierra Leone. It's her own auntie. Her own auntie has married her and said, I've tied you. Now, now, now. You are a liar. By the count of three. Wherever you are, that you have tied her. We send fire and tender on you. By the count of three. Somebody clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray. Break! <laughs> She's afraid of the tender and fire, Jesus. but something is happening right now. Amen. Everybody saw fire. fire. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. By this prayer, the Lord says within three months that auntie will die. Jesus. Oh, look at the way you are clapping. Jesus. Uh -huh. she, she wanted this lady to commit suicide. Jesus. 
Lady, does she live in Ghana or Sierra Leone or she has come to live in Ghana? She's what? She's here for what? She's here for 10 months. She lives in Ghana now. They were going to hear that she has committed suicide. Because the auntie said, I've finished her. Because I've married her at the age of 11 years. But fire. Fire. Let's send fire to Sierra Leone now. The auntie is in Sierra Leone right now. The house number of the auntie I see right now is number 17. She's in the town that is called McKinney. She's there right now. I see her. Even as the fire has started now, what I'm seeing right now is that the auntie has felt it. That's right. Somebody, let's blow fire. Shout fire. Fire. Somebody, yes, 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 yes. Fire. 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 Somebody Clap for the name of the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. Power of Worship International. Testimony Wow, how many people have been blessed? Amen. I miss all of you. All, all those who were coming to church when I was away, may God bless you. Amen. All those who are not coming, may God have mercy on you. Amen. Clap your hands to the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank God that, you know, if you're a leader and nobody under you can do something that you can do, if you can do some of it, you are not a leader. If you're a leader, you shouldn't be like Goliath, that you are the only one who can do everything. It's only insecure leaders who do everything by themselves. God, anywhere I go, God uses me to train people. And great people, great people have been trained in this church. You can come here as an ant, you live here as an elephant. You can come here as a weakling, but you live here as a giant in Jesus' name because God will favor your life in Jesus' name. Amen. This month of supernatural, don't miss any of the services. Is that okay? Because, you know, what you are saying, you are supposed to be positive in life. You are supposed to always be positive. If you see something negative, that's what you see. Be positive. When it came to this place, I said, this whole land that we built, we bought for $300,000 is not enough. We need to take over. If you don't know, on paper, officially, that area, we have bought it. Yeah. I know why some of you didn't clap. I know why. Because you made a pledge, you didn't pay. So you didn't clap. You made the pledge. Leave it. The auntie's gone. Three months. She will hear. On Wednesday, I'll, I'll mention the name of the auntie to her. So from today, if you are coming to church and you get to outside the Burkina Faso there, these days when you are walking there and you are driving there, be strong. You know, at first, when you are driving there and you get there, they will say, hey, 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 don't go on speed. If you go on speed, you will kill our chicken and cat. <laughs> right now, when you get there, drive whatever you want. Yeah. If they say, hey, you tell them, we will, we will suck you. Yeah. <laughs> the agent called me the other time, and I said to them, right now, we have paid. When are they leaving? I said, prophet, give them about two, three months. I said, we are waiting. So right now, their hand is in our mouth. But at first, our hand was in their mouth. <laughs> Very soon. I said, most of you, the people, listen. Some people thought they were controlling you, but they don't know. Oh, my. Oh, oh, listen to me. Listen, whatever happens. Sit down, sit down. Listen, whatever happens in the church, it's not for the church. It's for the people. So if God has worked this miracle for the church, it means your miracle 
Listen, the tables are about to turn. Yeah. To all the agents, I said, they, they need to be very quick. So, prophet, right now they are begging you. They say they will give them some time. They are not looking for a place. Amen. Because the the owners, any money they go to, they have to give them some for the people to go. So they to think they have got their share. Listen to me. I declare, whatever you go, you take over. Yeah. Listen, all the all, all the other houses that is around, go and tell them that we are coming. Yeah. Oh, look, look, the the way you clap means you don't have faith. You didn't hear the preaching. Did you hear the preaching? He said, whatever you say is what you receive. I said, go and tell them we are coming. We are taking over. Amen. So by the way, all the people that made the pledges that you have not paid, we are waiting for you. Because according to the list, some people have not paid their tithes. Yeah, it has been paid. One twenty thousand dollars paid cast off, but you know that balance that I used to add to it, we need to pay it. Because listen to me, uh, myself, I will not be able to get all this place. People pledged, people paid, people did very well. You know, um, out of the one twenty, out of the one twenty. Dollar rate is what three times four point something. Divide one fifty thousand by dollar rate and let me see the amount. One fifty thousand. So right now when you are walking about, be strong. Okay. We do no more tobo I say. Amuji agwa so best Thirty four. So which means we by the grace of God, the pledges and everything. We were able to release about ninety thousand dollars, so the thirty remaining, it has been added to it by the grace of God. But we need to lead our pledges so that because I don't want to upset the thirty again, because out of the out of the ninety, I give thirty in it as well. So if I give thirty again, I've given sixty, and all of you have given how much? Sixty. No, it's an error. I want God to bless all of you people. Is that okay? But let's thank God for giving us the place. Can we thank God for giving us the place? So, after Christmas, our construction will start. And 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 and, and how many people are, are enjoying the, the 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 offices? Very nice plan. Oh, clap once to the name of the Lord for that one. Nice plan. For your pastor, I like night things. If you are here, you don't like night things. This church is not for you. Go for the good ones. 